Welcome back everybody, Marco Collective Gamer 77 here, and today we'll be doing a quick overview of the Neo Geo Pocket Collection Volume 1 for the Nintendo Switch. For those of you out there who remember back in the late 90s, the Neo Geo Pocket Color actually came out in Japan in March of 1999 and August of 1999 in America. It originally retailed for about $69.99 US or to about $79 or $89.99 depending on which import shop you went to. Uh, the system itself was 16-bit. It was brought out by SNK to try to compete with the Game Boy Color. And it was 16-bit with a 6.144 MHz processor with a Zilov Z80 for sound. It was a decent screen for that time. It was a 2.7-inch screen that was 160 by 152 resolution. It could display 146 colors out of 4,096. It, it was non-backlit, so there are definitely a lot of add-ons to make the screen backlit. And now today, if you do still have a Neo Geo Pocket Color, you can actually get it modded with a backlit screen. It ran on two AA batteries for 40 hours of play. It did also have a CR2032 battery to keep date and time. A total of 82 games were released. And uh, on the Switch itself, uh, this particular collection, there'll be 10 games, seven of which were actually released individually for $7.99 each prior to, to any sales on the eShop. And then four of them were not released individually. So those games were Big Tournament Golf, Dark Arps, Fail of Fury, Gal Fighters, King of Fighters, Last Blade, Metal Slug First Mission, Metal Slug Second Mission, Samurai Showdown, and SNK vs. Capcom Match of the Millennium. So Big Tournament Golf, Dark Arms, Metal Slug 1, and Metal Slug Second Mission, and SNK vs. Capcom Match of the Millennium can only be bought in this collection. Um, and if those of you out there who have, were lucky enough Play Asia were, is, had announced and started a pre-order for the actual physical version, which is all in one cartridge. Unfortunately, it looks like as of uh, today, April 12, 2021, they've now taken down that posting. Because I guess they sold through their pre-orders. There's also rumors that Limited Run Games will be releasing one as well. So here we go and we begin as we go through a quick overview of each game. And we kick things off with Big Tournament Golf, which is the little brother of Turf Masters on the Neo Geo. Back then in 1999, this was the only way to get Turf Masters um, on the go. Uh, fortunately, nowadays, you can, of course, just pick up the ACA Turf Masters on the eShop and play the whole arcade on the go. But uh, back in 99, so many years ago, this was the only way we could, way we could play it on the go especially with 40 hours of battery life. One of the nice things about the Neo Geo Pocket when it came out is that instead of a standard directional pad, it did have an analog stick along with the A and B buttons. So it made controls, especially for fighting games. Uh, basically, it was a fighting gamer's heaven when it came to controls. Uh, this particular game here has three holes, uh, as far as three courses, I mean. And of course, can play your standard nine via stroke play. You can also do versus via link. The gameplay itself is easy to control, but hard to master. Uh, very, very good call game to have on the go, especially back in 99. And for all you Turf Masters fan, this was really one of the best ways to play Turf Masters until, of course, nowadays where you can pick up the ACA Turf Masters from the eShop. Uh, I still have very, very fond memories of playing this game and trying to go <laughs> a birdie at each hole. Sometimes going a birdie, sometimes a bogey, and just basically trying to even it out. Uh, I have definitely also sworn quite a few times in this game, as the difficulty gets a bit harder with some of the, the later shots uh, on each course. And as you can see from this main screen, of course, can select each cartridge. We can play, choose the box color. You can actually view with the box in a kind of a virtual 3D piece. I do love the import boxes that uh, games originally came out with. And I hope that if Limited Run Games does do their collection, that they'll come up with a plastic snap case as well. Uh, the next game is Dark Arms, which is a action RPG, kind of top-down and kind of in the Zelda fashion. Uh, it's definitely got more of a horror, horror kind of a dark gothic theme, theme to it. 
uh, plays very well. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to really play this when it first came out, as I was a huge, or still actually am a huge fighting game fan. So, especially when it came to import, I couldn't justify the $60 that it cost to, to buy this. Plus, it was all in Japanese. And when it finally did came out in the United States, um, they just didn't release a lot of them in, so they're a little bit harder to find. Nowadays, this game is pretty hard to find, at least uh, cheaply. Pretty much notice to the Neo Geo Pocket games, if you're trying to find them in the box. Uh, in America, they were released in cardboard boxes, which is another kind of a negative. I wish they released the plastic cases as well. Um, but so it is uh, easily 60 to $100 cartridge alone. Um, so this is definitely one of the much better ways and more economic ways to get this on the go. Uh, especially for your Nintendo Switch with a nice... 5 to 6 inch screen depending if you're playing on the light or your standard switch. The gameplay itself, as I mentioned, is tap down, top down, Zelda RPG-ish style. Um, you basically can harvest different zombie or different, different monster souls to actually use a seed to create your weapon. Um, so as I mentioned, didn't get quite much into this, kind of played it for about 10-20 minutes while I was really starting this video, I was really wanting to get to the other games in the series. And next up is one of my favorite games in the series is Fatal Fury. This actually takes characters from Real Bout 2 and plays and controls very well. One thing I will say when it comes to the Switch version, I do not recommend using any of the Hori fighting sticks. Uh, it really was programmed to either be used with the analog sticks on the Joy-Cons, uh, the D-pads on the Joy-Cons, or if you're using the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, the analog stick or the directional buttons. I uh, tried using the Switch games, uh, the, sorry, the Neo Geo Pocket games with the Hori arcade fighting stick and also the mini stick and I definitely had some problems with the controls. Um, that said, once I switched over to using the Joy-Con or using uh, the analog stick, it was just fine. So I think it was definitely something in the way these games are programmed. Uh, the wonderful thing about this, it still maintains all of the gameplay complexities um, from Real Bout 2, which is amazing considering they went from a four button scheme, uh, scheme to just two, just using an A and B versus A, B, C, D. So it's an amazing port and I definitely one that I recommend if you haven't already picked it up. Uh, I definitely double dipped and I picked it up separately because I didn't know, of course, that they released this as a collection. Definitely one of my favorite games. And next up is Gal Fighters. And I'll be honest, when this first came out in 1999, I was definitely not a person that picked this up. Um, while I do enjoy Fighters, for some odd reason, it, this one just, just did not appeal to me. Uh, during the recording of this video, I found that it was actually a pretty unique fighter that controls surprisingly well. So this was one of the few games that worked fairly decently when it came for use on the Hori fight sticks or even the mini stick uh, so this was one of the ones this and I believe Samurai Showdown where I didn't have too much difficulty when it came to using controls I did notice that with the fight sticks a lot of times when I press back once or hold back it would double double dash backwards or skip backwards when I'm using the fight stick um, so this game really surprised me there was actually quite a bit of moves that I didn't uh, expect it's almost quite like an auto combo um, a little bit of a simplified fighting game engine but very very enjoyable so again I, I was pleasantly surprised this is one of those games that, that was also individually released on the eShop but I did not pick it up separately so I'm glad it came packed in and this collection and I thought I'd take a little bit of a break and show you some of the different kind of default uh, view screens you can do you can change the background frames to either no background template at all, or the different palette swaps of the different Neo Geo Pocket color systems that was out during that time. You can also select to go ahead and turn on and off kind of a, I don't want to say a CRT filter, but it's most likely like a dot matrix filter. So you can have it with or without. I personally leave it uh, with it on. It does remind me, you know, kind of back in the day what it looked like to try to play this over a dot matrix screen. So definitely pretty cool as far as the filters. And next up, we've got King of Fighters, and which also, again, released in 1999. This was definitely one of those games that did not or was not programmed well for use with the Hori Fight Sticks, 
uh, but does work well with the analog uh, Joy-Cons, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, or the D-Pads on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Uh, this game is, again, it's King of Fighters. You can choose individual or team play. Of course, being a much smaller portable on the go, the selection of characters aren't quite as large as the, your usual King of Fighters. It's a little bit of a smaller roster. Uh, but, you know, again, for, for back in the day, this game was definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, again, a wonderful surprise. Again, I, this is one of those ones that is and can be picked up individually um, on the eShop store, and which I did when it came out last year. So, part of me does wish I waited, but uh, and another part of me, I'm, I'm still glad that I picked it up. Again, I recommend either using the analog stick uh, to use the controls otherwise all the pretty much the main moves for most of the characters are there um so you know definitely no problems uh with the moves i get once you switch to the analog stick unfortunately for my video um and i'll kind of show some of the the video gameplay here i was definitely having difficulties with doing any of the special moves using the fight stick um, when i recorded this video the nice part is, of course, uh, it does have your different stage backgrounds. It does change from round to round. There's even little fight intros. Uh, but as, as you can see, the AI is still pretty merciless when it comes to the to the combos once you get going. Uh, again, uh, most of the moves were there for the characters. Uh, just a little bit tougher to pull off when it came to any type of um, half circle backwards uh, type of emotion. But otherwise, it control, did control well once I switched controls to the more standard analog stick or D-pad on the Nintendo Pro Switch controller or on the Joy-Cons themselves. Um, sound effects, uh, pretty you know simple. Again, this was really... All these games were pretty much set to compete with the Game Boy Color. So for what uh, it was competing with and what we had back in 99, this was definitely an amazing game for those times definitely does not beat the uh, being able to play the Arcade Perfect emulation from the ACA releases on the eShop, but it is amazing to see how far we've come. And if you pick this up during your heyday and you are really sad like I am to have let them go or have donated them, um, I really wish I still had mine and I didn't donate, and I wish I didn't donate my uh, Neo Geo Pocket uh, to family and wish I just kept it. But it is what it is. Um, this game definitely brought back some memories. This is one of my favorites. This and Match of Millennium were my two favorite fighting games. And then I'm hoping that uh, with a Volume 2 that they'll release uh, Capcom, SNK vs. Capcom Card Fighters. That was also another one of my favorites that I would love to play along with Fasali, which was a strategy RPG. And as you can see, uh, once I got the hang of it, some of the moves were okay, but I was really only able to kind of bust out those special moves maybe three out of ten times trying to use the fight stick. So again, if you are going to play, either play it using the analog stick or play it using the D-pads on the uh, Nintendo Pro Switch controller. Alright, next we've got Last Blade. And one of the things I didn't mention that also really impressed me with the Neo Geo Pocket Color games was even though it was 16-bit, uh, definitely not, you know, Genesis quality, but at least more than easily matched and sometimes surpassed some of the Game Boy Color games, was that each of the games still had your standard SNK intro, um, which was really amazing because, you know, it didn't get quite a lot of, didn't really get that with a lot of the Game Boy Color games. To be able to see this type of a, a port translation from the arcade game, and even though they shrunk it down, they were able to still fit a lot of the, the character that each game had and you could tell each of the games were really a labor of love considering how much they were able to translate down going from the Neo Geo's you know massive megabits to a small cartridge like this. Now this is another one of those games where I completely got wrecked because I could not pull off any of the specials with the uh, Hori fight sticks. So again you know, it's kind of ad nauseum at this point, but if you are going to play the Switch games, go ahead and use it on the built-in analog stick or D-pads if you're using the Joy-Cons or the uh, Switch Pro controller. Uh, otherwise, though, the gameplay is still intact. 
A lot of the characters are there from the first Last Blade, along with the kind of scene transitions and the, the background intros when you get to the stage kind of stage background intros. So again, very amazing that they've been they were able to fit that. Um, I did try uh, using Lee, uh, which is one of my favorite characters to use in the arcade game, uh, and found myself getting absolutely wrecked because I was I I was able to pull off one of the special moves one time and then tried doing it again but for some reason I just couldn't pull it off uh, with the fight stick um, but still this was one of those games uh, I unfortunately did not pick up when it came out only because um, the import copy with the plastic case came out in such limited numbers that most of my friends picked it up and the only ones that were left um, uh, were basically ones in the cardboard box when it came out in the United States so and I didn't want to play the, pay the extra extra price but though uh, thinking back now I probably should have and kept it because now uh, a lot of these games especially the import ones with the plastic snap cases easy go for about hundred and fifty two hundred dollars especially if it has the manual and you know complete in box so you know hindsight 2020 so I wish I did pick those up and I definitely wish I kept it but still I am uh, very happy to see this uh, in this collection as well uh, this game was released individually on the eShop, so you could pick it up um, and don't have to pick it up as part of the collection. Um, I actually picked this up when it went on sale. It went on sale briefly for about $3.99, so I didn't pay the full $7.99 price. Uh, but again, you know, I think this collection with 10 games is a great deal at $40. Or eventually, probably in the next six months to a year, I'm sure you know, SNK will have a sale on it. and My guess will probably drop down to $29.99 or maybe $34.99. Five to ten dollars off, but either way, it's still a great deal. Um, I do recommend if PlayAsia has it again, or if Limited Run goes ahead with their limited physical copy, to go ahead and pre-order. Definitely, completely worth it. All right, now here we come to one of the other games that was actually and can't be picked up individually on the Nintendo eShop: Metal Slug First Mission. Now, this was one of the best ways to play Metal Slug on the go prior to Metal Slug coming out on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, that version is actually really, really good. It's basically these games, Metal Slug First and Second Mission, but with Game Boy Advance graphics to make it mimic the original arcade games. This one is very different than the original arcade, so instead of one hit and you die, you can actually get up to three different hits. And during the mission, you can either eat uh, food um, or you know, kind of pick up rations during the gameplay to restore your life. Uh, so it was definitely a lot more forgiving uh, than the original Metal Slug arcade games. Again, um, definitely recommend picking this and playing this on the analog or directional pad. Uh, but as far as gameplays, I, the only thing I, I couldn't figure out, but I didn't check the manual, so I'll be honest, with just the A and B buttons, B is to jump, A is to use your gun, uh, I didn't figure out how to use the uh, grenade buttons. I tried pressing B and A, but that didn't seem to work. Um, so that is one thing I probably will have to check the, the manual for. But definitely glad, of course, that I picked this up uh, almost part of this collection. Again, this is, at least for right now, as of uh, April 12, 2021, uh, the Metal Slug first and second missions games cannot be picked up separately. So the only way to get these two games is to get, part of, to get it as part of this collection. All right, and now we go to Metal Slug Second Mission. And what I do love about this game, this game actually uh, has, funnily, at least in the emulation, some slowdown whenever you pick up a weapon. In the original, the first game, the first mission, when you picked up a weapon, it didn't really announce it, so it kept going smoothly. But in this, this game, when you pick up cannon, it actually says cannon. Or if you pick up grenade launcher, it says grenade launcher. And actually, there's a slowdown because there's a hiccup on the gameplay. And, and to be honest, I don't recall um, whether or not the original Neo Geo Pocket Color game paused as well. Um, I can only guess that, that it did. So um, if it did or didn't, please go ahead and enter in the comments because I honestly did not have second mission uh, physically when it, when it originally came out in 1999. So and let me know in the comments below whether whether or not it, if it did have that slowdown. The sequel, otherwise though, is definitely a, a continuation of the first, a little bit better in some areas. Uh, now there are submarine modes where the original game had, say, you could fly like a Harrier jet. Um, controls still the same. A to shoot, B is to jump, 
against the lid to figure out how to use the bomb, but but uh, other than that, still an excellent game to play. And still also has the three life system. You can refill their life uh, with any rations or food that you pick up during the levels um, as well. And also, you can't pick this up again individually on the eShop. It does have to be picked up as part of this collection. All right, next up we've got Samurai Showdown for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. This easily is one of my favorite games, and actually one of the games that controlled fairly well uh, using the Hori Fight Stick. Again, of course, controls with no problem if you use the analog stick or the directional buttons on the Pro Controller, or even the analog stick on the Joy-Cons. Uh, didn't have any problems really pulling off any of the special moves with this game. The funny part, this game actually, as far as storyline and the characters it introduces, like Asura, um, is actually from Samurai Showdown 64, which is a 3D Samurai Showdown, which actually never got a home release of the arcade translation. There was a uh, PlayStation port of the original Sam Show 64, uh, which unfortunately was not very good. But as far as the gameplay, the graphics, all the characters are there, and there's actually um, a selection of characters, I believe there is nine, that you can pick from the beginning, and then there's ones that you unlock as you beat the game. And of course, being your standard SNK, the bosses get ridiculously hard uh, as you go on. But as far as the gameplay, all the special moves, uh, they're all there. Um, you can even choose from the slash and bust mode of each character. The music itself is a great uh, kind of a, a translation port from the arcade originals. You can easily recognize a lot of the theme songs of the characters once you get to the stages. Very, of course, akin and similar to its Big Brother Neo Geo arcade counterpart. Again, you know, back in the day in 99, this was the only way to get to bring Samurai Showdown portable with any amount of decent of battery life. Uh, there was the Samurai Showdown on Sega Genesis, uh, which you could play in the Nomad, but uh, if, if you ever had a Sega Nomad, which was basically a portable Genesis, even with using six AA batteries, that thing maybe lasted an hour and a half to two hours. So uh, it was definitely very expensive, especially if you didn't have the rechargeable battery pack. So this was the next best thing, um, especially when it came to controls as that analog uh, micro stick, sorry, uh, that with click stick that was on the Neo Geo Pocket Color was amazing for fighting games, even with games that have such complex controls when it comes to utilizing the supers, uh, like in Samurai Showdown or any of the Fatal Fury games, uh, it, this made it pretty much a breeze. And uh, definitely recommend picking this up. This can be picked up individually uh, and was released last year for $7.99 and then oftentimes can be seen for about $3.99 on the eShop. So, but of course, you can also pick it up as part of its collection as well. And last but not least, SNK vs. Capcom Match of the Millennium, again, came out in 99 in America. This was definitely a game I wish I held on to, even if I didn't have a Neo Geo Pocket Color anymore, because I had the import version with the snap case, and absolutely loved this game. Uh, this game did have a lot of the SNK and Capcom characters that uh, come default. You do have characters you have to unlock, again, by beating the game. Uh, as far as controls for both the Capcom SNK side, they were very well done. And it really made me, I honestly believe this is actually a better game than SVC Chaos, which did come out on the Neo Geo Arcade system, and which also came out on the Xbox, original Xbox and uh, the PS2. Um, again, I think this is hands down definitely a much better game than that. And this gives me hope that... Um, that hopefully Capcom and SNK will go ahead and release SNK uh, versus Capcom Card Fighters Clash, both the Capcom and SNK versions, because those were also an amazing card battling game, kind of like the Yushia 
Yu-Gi-Oh style. Couldn't talk there for a second. But using Capcom and SNK characters, also one of my favorite games, which were hands down better than the sequel that did, that they did release on the DS, which unfortunately was just not as good. Uh, so the, these ones were definitely the, the best, uh, and I, I can't wait for Capcom. And I'm also praying that Capcom and SNK work it out, and we get Card Fighters Clash, and then hopefully down the line, um, Capcom vs SNK one and Capcom vs SNK two to be re-released on Nintendo Switch and then hopefully physical as well because while I do have those games on the GameCube and my PS2 um, I would love to see it again because unfortunately I don't have my Dreamcast anymore so that would be the other way you could play it so I definitely recommend this game it's amazing to uh, this kind of blew our minds back in the day because these games came out before SNK vs Capcom and of course this was the only handheld official way to have an SNK vs Capcom fighting game so this again if you're a fighting game fan this was a dream come true when it came out in 99 and playing this um, on the go was absolutely amazing easily made uh, you know those times at work or if you're waiting in line somewhere go by much faster. And with that, that brings us to the pretty much the end of this video. Um, we've gone through a, just a really brief overview of all 10 games. I uh, did try to make this uh, as short as possible uh, while still being able to show kind of the graphics of the gameplay, uh, doing a quick overview of each one. Originally, this video was about oh, was over an hour long as I was trying to put in as much gameplay as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, just uh, in order to cut it down, um, even to the 27 28 minutes did have to cut a lot of things out um, overall value for the collection is amazing it, uh, again it's on the eShop right now for $39.99 um, and you get 10 games so really you know three dollars and 99 cents per title uh, back in the day if you, know, we were, you were picking these up on say the US retail release there were $39.99 a pop for most of these games uh, there were some cheaper games, like some of the puzzle games were only $19.99 or $24.99, uh, but definitely a steal at $3.99 if you count, you know, getting all 10 games. If you try to collect these games nowadays, especially physical versions, you're easily looking $50 a pop or higher, and that's just for cartridge only. Forget about it if you're also trying to get the case, box, or, or manuals that came with it. Um, as I mentioned, one of the things I, I was hoping for that limited run would do is to do kind of singular kind of releases but with the snap case um, but since that there is going since there is going to be a cartridge with all 10 games my guess is that uh, uh, limited run games will probably do kind of a classic edition uh, for the US with the United States uh, with that snap case at least that's what I'm hoping maybe some of the, the mini art cards probably a foldable poster which I wish they wouldn't do because there's just so many creases on them um, but I am uh, that is of course still a rumor it's not uh, hasn't been confirmed but I hope that does happen that limited run games does release a collector's edition for this pack and be completely worth it to me and for you Neo Geo diehards out there and especially for the ones that were fans of the Neo Geo pocket which originally when it originally came out and also uh, sadly miss um, having sold donated or uh, <laughs> gifted the system or games uh, so definitely this is a, a wonderful collection to pick up uh, right now at least as far as April 2021 the only way to have gotten a physical copy was to pre-order it through Play Asia. unfortunately their store right now has taken off the listings as they have sold out of their pre-orders um, so maybe they may be uh, they may be able to get restocks or maybe they might reprint more if you aren't able to wait for limited run games uh, but unfortunately it looks like they are currently sold out so depending on the run it might be a, one of those really low run high yield will go up in price and value quick I'm um, still keeping my fingers crossed that limited run games rumor is true and that does come out first so that f more folks can pick up the physical version and of course hoping that they release a snap case version to kind of mimic and uh, like the old the way the old games were. I, originally I was hoping that SNK, that the limited run games would partner with SNK and kind of re-release the games uh, 
in a cartridge format using the mini snap lock case. And actually one of the things I wouldn't mind is if they release uh, some of the ACA Neo Geo games, one car one game per cartridge uh, using the SNK mini snap case but using a miniaturized version of the regional uh, of the original AES artwork with manuals. I think that would be amazing to have like a mini collection switch only cartridges of the original arcade Neo Geo games. Uh, probably only a pipe dream, but uh, one can always hope. But I do want to say uh, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.